Now you could probably guess, putting on a convention is a lot of work. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving pieces. You have to get all these types of things in sync and in line with one another. And my next guests today are responsible for running the Retro Game Con here in Syracuse. Patrick Milligan and returning guest Danny Tripodi have been putting together the Retro Game Con and growing it year after year. It's a convention that focuses on bringing all gamers and nerds and geeks and friends and people together under one roof to celebrate their love of video games. Something that's very close to my heart since, man, I was playing Pokemon Yellow on my Game Boy Color late at night. These guys are fantastic, and they are responsible for putting on a really great convention. I went to the Junior Retro Game Con at the most with my son, and man, we had a lot of fun. They had tons of things set up, tons of interactive uh, TVs, old consoles that you could play, a lot of different vendors. In this episode, we focused on talking about how they grew the Retro Game Con and kind of what goes in together on, on putting on a convention. So I'll tell you what, it is no easy feat to put on one of those events. I don't ask you this too often, but if you like the episode, make sure you share it with a friend, subscribe, or maybe drop a comment. Anchor also lets you, the viewer, uh, click the link in the show description. You can leave a voice message. I haven't had a chance to use it yet, and if you leave me a voice message, we'll put it on a show, and uh, we'll give it a try and see see what it sounds like. I've never tried it. I've been dying to try it. So anyways, enough of me begging for your love and affection. Here are two people that really deserve your love and affection even more. Danny and Pat are fantastic people. And man, they're so intelligent when it comes to putting these things on. I was really excited I got to talk to them because they're super intelligent. And man, I've known Danny for so long. I Any opportunity I get to talk to Danny, I'm in. I'm sold. So here are my two friends, Pat and Danny. <laughs> Pat, Danny, thank you so much for doing uh, the podcast because I'm really excited about the Retro Game Con. There has to be a lot of planning that goes into this, right? How many events have you guys done? Well, the con started in 2013 and I was brought on board in 2014. So I actually didn't start the convention. Uh, that was our friend Ed Forth founded the con and uh, ran it for the first few years. Um, so, but we've still done, uh, I guess that means that we're on our seventh one this year that we've done. Whoa. And lots of mini events in between. Like we do a lot of charity events and small side events. Yeah, like the one that you did at the most. That's where I had a chance to meet you, Pat. Was yeah, right for Gen Con Junior. Right, right. That was, our, that was our new one to try out this year to sort of test the post-pandemic waters to see what an event would look like, uh, you know, in this... Uh, age of uh of covid and yeah. it was pretty successful we're very happy with it uh it, it we pulled it off safe and uh, everybody had fun um that was cool we'll definitely do retro game con junior again next year and the most were wonderful hosts oh i i hear they are fantastic to work with yeah definitely really love that's, working with them uh that's cool venue for a small show uh we didn't really have any complaints whatsoever about about it just praise from everybody all around Oh, that's cool. I love I love to hear that. When you took over, uh, or actually when you started doing the Game Con with the previous owner, did you have any like uh, experience doing conventions? Um, I had experience a little bit of experience going to conventions. Uh, yeah, not, right. Not really any event planning experience whatsoever. I started out as a volunteer, and I just, as you know, when uh, there's an organization that's mostly made up of volunteers people's uh, availability and interest kind of uh, will wane over time. And uh, so people will drop off and then you'll have new people come on. And uh, as some other people kind of took a step back, I took a few steps forward and started taking over more and more. And then finally there was a discussion where it was like, how about I just run the thing? And nobody was opposed. So I took Whoa. it over and, uh, 
And a lot of the original people are actually still helping us now, including the original owner is still helping us out with it. And, oh, wow. Uh, Danny, uh, Danny's uh, along with our friend Nate and uh, our friend Justin. He's one of our right hand guys. And uh, nice. does like all the graphics for us that you see. Uh, one thing that we I'll definitely brag about is we have very slick graphics for an event company. Yeah. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's all this guy. So I know. Uh, Danny. <laughs> Danny, you're so goddamn talented. With all that stuff. <laughs> he is. He, yeah. Danny doesn't like praise from his friends. Danny hates it. He always blushes, but it's well deserved, dude, because you are a very creative. And how long have you been helping the game con, Danny? Uh, that's what I was trying to think of. I'm pretty sure it was 16, right? Retro yeah, game 2016. 16. Uh, yep. Pat reached out to me because of the game shell, the extra life stuff that we would do for game shell. No, it was because of your jean jacket. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's My whack you. jean jacket. <laughs> you got to stand out at these things. You got to look different. He had a power glove on and <laughs> flip up shades probably and yeah. a jean jacket with a bunch of video game patches and pins on it. So... <laughs> That just says this is the this, person who wants to volunteer. That says, that says this guy will work for me for free. <laughs> <laughs> this guy will work yeah. for graphics for for free. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's only been four retro game cons, technically five if you count junior or four and a half, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but it it's been awesome. You know, we, we get to run the extra life stage and we collect donations throughout both days. Uh, not as much as what Justin does, though. He is crazy good at collecting donations. Uh, yeah, our, our friend uh, Justin uh, reaches out to all these different gaming companies and asks for donations throughout the year for us to use uh, for our charity raffles and our charity auction. And with, with a year. lot of success, we get a lot of really generous companies donating yeah, to us. I don't know how he does it, though, because every year it, it seems like there's more and more stuff. Mm -hmm. and we well, raise hopefully, more don't jinx it for this year. <laughs> We're still in the process. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, in 2019, we raised $14,000 for Extra Life. Wow. And people uh, probably know what Extra Life is if they're gamers. But if they're not, it's a charity that uh, benefits local Children's Miracle Network hospitals. So you can typically what you would do is you would sign up to be an extra life member. You can sign up on a team or create your own team. And then you can raise money throughout the year for your local children's miracle network hospital by gaming. And then there's uh, I, I think it's in November, first weekend in November. Yeah. I think every year there's a 24 hour uh, gaming uh, challenge. Uh -oh. And so it's, it's just like in school when you would raise money for like a run or something like that or, yeah or anything you were doing, you know, Pinewood Derby and Boy Scouts or whatever. You bug all your friends on Facebook, hey, I'm going to do this gaming marathon. Uh, and you donate something to it. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we have, we're, we're very lucky in Syracuse. We've not Retro Game Con, but we, the extra lifers in Syracuse, have grown it from almost nothing to raising, I don't, I don't know what the totals are, but in pre-pandemic years, I think we were upwards of like $50,000 oh, yeah. or something. Oh for the year yeah wow. and uh, it's out it's outdated info now but i used to brag that uh extra life in one year due to our efforts we were able to uh outfit the upstate galisano children's hospital with all new playstation threes mm -hmm. so that was, oh. that was years ago now but uh they're, yeah. just, they're they're all upgraded to ps4s and i don't know maybe ps5s at this point if they can so, find them yeah. yeah, and they have, and uh, and it goes towards other pediatric programs that they have there as well at the hospital, and they do a great job there. If you're yeah. if you have a kid that's uh, got the unfortunate uh, circumstance of being sick, that is a good place to end up because they have so much stuff to do there and so many uh, helpful, talented, caring people to help keep them entertained. And that's yeah. what extra life is all about. It's our it's our passion to raise yeah, money. Top of line care and all around, uh, just really nice people there. When yeah. you guys are asking these game game like what kind of game companies have offered to donate like that's pretty impressive. Uh, there's been a lot, and you know I'll I'll blank on a lot of the bigger ones, and Justin will be upset. But there's uh, the uh, gaming accessory company PDP that makes a lot of uh, third party headsets and nice controllers. Oh. Uh, they also make those Pixel Pals. If you've ever seen them in GameStop, they're like the size of oh. a Funko Pop, but they're like eight bit light up video game characters. Yeah, so they all, they've always donated a lot of stuff to us. We've had uh, we've had like companies like 
Konami, uh, Square Enix. Wow, uh, that's really cool. Companies. Yeah, uh, in 2019, Gale Force Nine, which is a board game company, was yeah. a was a big supporter of the con. They sponsored us and gave us a ton of a ton of great board games. They have the Jaws board game and the Dune board game. Yeah. So we got like many copies of those to give away. Wow. Uh, to raffle off. And then also our vendors. We have a ton of vendors, and every year and at every event, the vendors are quite generous. And you know they don't have to, but they drop off stuff for us to use to fundraise for charity as well. Whoa, mm -hmm. that's really cool. I you have like big names and little like local. Well, I'm thinking of one vendor on the top of my head that I met at the Junior Game Con. Okay, Princess Diane. She makes patches. Yeah, yeah, uh, patches uh, and accessories. Yeah, uh, like I. Prima Diana. Pre, there it is. Prima, Prima Diana. Diana. There you go. She uh, is very talented with her patches. And I'm. it's really cool to see, like, like I would imagine her donating, like, hey, here's, like, 10 patches you can donate. And then you have Konami, who's like, here's a bunch of, like, board games. Like, that is such a, a really cool yin and yang to see. Especially, I would feel like those bigger people would be like, no, get out of here. I'm not doing nothing. Get out of here. No, I mean, they, our own they, foundation. Have, they have tons of stuff to give away. If all you have to do is reach out and uh, it's a little different now, having gone through uh, COVID, a lot of companies are on tighter budgets for this sort of thing. And, and events in general have dried up a little bit. Right. Um, there's not, there's not a lot of events like us left in 2022. Um, and this year is obviously a big test for us as it is for anybody trying to come back after the pandemic. Um, during, I mean, during the pandemic, depending on uh, what your point of view is, I mean, there's still uh, concerns that we have, about uh, people getting sick now. Um, we take every precaution and, uh, and we encourage masks and uh, you know temperature checks and such, but it's still, a, still an ongoing concern. So it's a real test this year for events and for companies that support events like ours to see if we can keep the convention scene going strong into the future. Right, right. And like that has got to be, like what, so when you guys are saying pre-COVID and, and post-COVID, what are you guys doing differently to promote it? Are you guys trying to take some different avenues? Because it really is like, hey, this is where we see if, if we still got the juice in the tank, right? Yeah, yeah. We, if people still want to go to conventions and stuff. So what, do you, what are you trying to do different? Well, uh, three years later, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really tough to know um, how many people are still interested in coming to an in-person yeah big crowded event like this right um judging by the couple of smaller events that we've run and the other conventions in the northeast that i've been to so far this year i think people are ready to come back to in-person event events um but all i can say is that uh if people want there to be conventions in the future 2022 is the year to come out and support us because if we don't get the attendance and if if these other cons don't get the attendance, then they may throw in the towel, you know, because yeah. uh, these are very uh, large, expensive, complicated events to run. And uh, an event like ours is like a, almost a full time job for me throughout the year. So uh, it's it's a big test is all I can say. I, I hate to sound like I'm complaining or or like, uh, you know, uh, begging for people to come out and support us. I am kind of begging for people to come out. Please and come us. out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but so, so far, what we've seen is quite encouraging. Um, what are we doing different? I don't know. <laughs> I think ramped up um, safety measures, you know, like we're disinfecting areas. And yeah, yeah. The, the same stuff that you would see everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And the, the on-center as, as our venue has, has new precautions in place as well to protect people. But as far as promoting goes, we're kind of doing the same old channels. Uh, we're setting up, uh, you know, free play game consoles at any any event that will take us that's even – slightly nerdy um, yeah. we're doing these little brewery events we've got a uh, retro game con wednesdays at buried acorn a uh, brewing company in syracuse um, nice what do you might... guys do there uh we have only done one so far but oh, okay. we'll we'll bring a bunch of game consoles uh with classic video games on them uh set them up for people to play at this last one it was a hybrid halo slash pac-man themed event okay so we had we had uh, we had Halo and original Pac-Man going on next to each other, and we had high score contests and uh, and a, like a little uh, tournament going on for Halo, and we'll do like a video game trivia contest. I'll, I'll run a trivia contest. Whoa! And uh, and we promote the con to the to the people who come out. 
Right. So wow, all, that's all, better cool. with, uh, all better with beers. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. That's funny. And when uh, you get an event like this, like Danny, how do you, how do you lay it out and figure out like what, what the flyer is going to look like or what the template's going to look like? How, how do you, where do you start? So usually we try to come up with a general theme, like uh, it was 2018 was more Super Mario based. Mm-hmm. We had the the first issue of Nintendo Power. We we kind of inspired that to be our program design, and the the overall theme was very Super Mario esque. Uh, before uh, 2020, before the pandemic uh, cut the rails on that, we were doing a Halo themed one uh, based around our guests that were appearing. This year we have more of a Genshin impact, but there's more, uh, the the theme overall is that Retro Game Con is back. Yeah. So it's more yeah. just Retro Game Con theme, yeah. just retro games. Uh, and, and that's where we kind of start from and give it usually like a synthwave look or a, a retro looking aesthetic that's still pleasing to draw in lots of people and not alienate just a certain yeah, group. we're we're very big on like neon pink, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> Stuff yeah, like, like the the retro looking style. Yeah. yeah, when uh, you know, it's funny you said make make people feel like like every it's all, for all parties. It's like uh, when I told my dad, I was like, I think I'm gonna bring Ashton to the Junior Retro Game Con. He was like, you think you think he might be like too young for it. I mean, Ashton's only two for sure. He was too young for it. Right. Mm -hmm. But him like just going around and experiencing it and then like watching, he sat and watched somebody play duck hunt for like five minutes and then he left and then he walked down and was mesmerized by uh, Sonic. Yeah. Sonic. Sega. So it was like, it was really cool to see that. And even my dad, my dad was even, I even caught him playing on an old Atari at the retro game con. So like he, like we all had fun and it was all age ranges, you know, especially if you love video games, that is the place to be. Yeah. It's literally called the retro game con. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I have to emphasize it's not all retro. We have, it's just gaming yep. in general. Uh, there's definitely a lot of retro stuff there, but we have a lot of modern things as well. Modern tournaments, Modern voice actor guests from current games, yeah, uh, Smash Bros. tournaments, Mario Bros., Kart tournaments, right. you know, fighting games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, you know. things like that. So it, <laughs> it spans all eras of gaming. Yeah, and that's that's the coolest thing about it. That's what I loved about the Junior Game Con because you guys had all different types of consoles set up everywhere for people to play. And mm-hmm. like you had said, Pat, too, it's not just old school or new school. There's also tabletop like role playing game vendors that were there. There was like different people yeah. selling different board games. Like it's it's like uh it's nerd heaven. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> all these all these different fandoms intertwine. Like if you're if you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, chances are you appreciate retro games. Yeah. And uh, and vice versa. You know, it's it's all part of the same cohesive whole. And yeah. uh what what I tell people when I want to do like the one sentence description of Retro Game Con is it's like Comic Con but video games. And uh, I guess that's not. I guess that's not wholly accurate. If I'm leaving out the tabletop stuff, because not only do we have that, but we have, you know, card games like uh, Magic: The Gathering and Pokemon uh, events going oh, on. Oh yeah, that's right. right. I forgot. People were selling their uh, like really nice trading cards at some of the the booths and tables too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and at the main event in October, there will be a lot more of that. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a local uh, game shop coming in to run uh, trading card events, so there will be. Uh, tournaments with a separate entry fee where you can actually win some cash if you're talented at these games. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's cool. It's, it's very cool. Would, was that always a part of the game con when you guys first were around 2013, like having magic yeah. the Gathering tournaments or card game tournaments? Pretty much. I'm not sure if the first one had those uh, tournaments. It was more of just like a vendor show. Uh, but, but yeah, from near the beginning, we've involved tabletop and card games. And another big aspect of the con is uh, not to be overlooked is cosplay. There's a ton oh. of cosplay that goes on there as well. And we have a cosplay contest and uh, you can win awesome. sponsor prizes and, and cash for that as well. And there's adults, oh. and kids versions and super serious and casual versions side by side. Whoa, that's cool. And with all these tournaments and all these different like events running, who runs each individual tournament? Is it just different volunteers? 
that's that's one of the more difficult parts of my job with the convention is finding the people willing to do these because uh, uh, it changes people's people's interest, you know, uh, ebbs and flows. And it's not the same people who want to run the same events year after year. So every year I'm kind of scrambling to find uh, volunteers or people who are willing to, you know, take some product or a retro game con shirt here and there to, uh, to come run a tournament for us. And luckily we found a lot of people who are, uh, you know, community minded and willing to help out and, uh, and run these events for us. But uh, every year it's, uh, you know, a bunch of new people coming in to run different events for us. We have, we have some uh, like Danny who runs some switch events at the con like Mario Kart, who's who've been with us for years. But uh, this year, especially after three year break, I needed more volunteers to run our events because we're looking right now at like 30 different various tournaments and contests. Oof. And so that's, that's coming together and it will come together by October 8th and 9th. But that's uh, my main, one of my main focuses at the moment is finding people to come in and run these events for us. If, if somebody's listening to this right now and wants to volunteer, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, they can contact through the website. If you go to retrogamecon.com and scroll all the way down, there's a contact button. Um, and then also you can uh, message us on Facebook, any of our social media, uh, direct message us on Instagram or Twitter, and I'll get all those and we respond right away. And uh, we'll put up an application as well for anyone looking to run events. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely look for, for people to come in if they have an idea of something that they'd like to run at the con. Uh, we'll provide prize support. We'll provide, you know, uh, free tickets for you and your friend to come to the con for the weekend. Uh, you, you can get one of our uh, con t-shirts, which is super cool this year. Um, yeah, we, uh, we try to uh, try to provide some incentives for people to come in and run events for us every year. That's what are the t-shirts also designed by you, Danny? Usually they would be, but can we, can we <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to, you want to grab it yeah. over there? It's underneath my laptop bag. I can, I'll show you the t-shirt design. We just, announced, oh, yes. we just announced it a couple of days ago, but I oh, have, a print, have a print out here. So let's get that in the frame. So there, there we go. Whoa. So our t-shirt theme this year is Retro Boy Rampage. And this is designed by Brian Colon, who is the original designer of the game Rampage, who's also a special guest at the show this year. Whoa. You see, we've got Retro Boy there, who is not certainly not a Game Boy. You can tell there's differences. <laughs> For sure. Definitely he's, not he's a Game surrounded Boy. Surrounded by the original uh, Rampage uh, characters, Ralph, George, and Lizzie perched on top there. And then if you recognize it, that's the on center building. <laughs> wow. That's our shirt design. And super that is cool. excited about it this year. Wow. That is so it, uh, that's another part of running these conventions. I feel like you get to meet a lot of cool people. Yeah. Over the years, we've had so many great guests. I'm accumulating a, I don't really collect anything anymore except for retro game con stuff. So I have like a signed memento or video game from every one of our guests that we've had. And we've what? had, uh, yeah, so I've, yeah, I don't have anywhere good to put them in my house yet, but uh, they're, they're stashed away. And we've had some great guests. We've had uh, everywhere from classic game designers like uh, David, David Crane. Who, Gary Kitchen. Yeah, David Crane and Gary Kitchen, who uh, were co-founders of Activision. You may have heard of that company. Oh, wow. In the Jeez. 90s and, uh, and developed games like Pitfall on Atari. Holy and cow. Battle Tank and some others. And then we've also had a lot of uh, famous voice actors like Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. Uh, Unbelievable. I'm really mad cool. that I missed that, to be honest. Yeah, that was a good one. He'll come back sometime. He's still doing all the cons. He's one of the busiest, busiest voice actors out there. He's at every con that you go to. So we'll have him back in Syracuse maybe next year. Danny, what was your favorite per like guest that you got to, oh. to see and, and meet? <laughs> easily Charles Martinet because yeah. you know, I, I love Mario. Mm -hmm. uh, so meeting him was surreal uh, and, and just like experiencing him as he, he does all the voices as he like signs stuff and he's talking like Luigi and then he's talking like Mario. Then he's talking like Wario. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. He, that's so, so cool. He's just so good too with our, with our guests and uh, volunteers. Yeah, that was that was a great year for guests. We also had uh, we all, who, all, who else did we have that year? We had some YouTubers. Uh, we had the voice of Princess Zelda from that Breath was of the 2019. Wild. Was that nineteen? Yeah, 
uh, who was? Who I'm was blanking right now, and yeah. I apologize to those people. But <laughs> oh, you're fine. No, <laughs> this is this is good. This is all of like very impressive. If there was, I'll ask this question to both of you. If there was one person that you would love to get, if money wasn't an issue, scheduling wasn't an issue, who would you want at the Retro Game Con? Well, I've I've really been aiming for Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, and he was signed up for our 2020 con, but uh, obviously that one got canceled. Yeah. And uh, we have not booked him for this year's show, but I'd like to I'd like to look into him for next year. There's also uh, Jen Taylor, who often goes to sh- the same shows that Steve Downs is at, and she's the voice of Cortana from Halo and the Microsoft oh. Assistant, discontinued mm. Microsoft Assistant. Uh, <laughs> she's also in the Halo uh, TV show, and she's the voice of Princess Peach and and Toad in the in the Mario games. So I didn't know two, that. Those two would be like a dream guest list for us. Didn't work out this year, but we're we're aiming for them for one of these one of these years coming up. That would be sick. Danny, you got one? Um I if money wasn't an issue. Money's not, not an issue here. I don't know how crazy it would go over, but I would love to this is just uh me being greedy, but I would love to meet Shigeru Miyamoto. Uh okay. Creator of Mario and Zelda and pretty yeah. much Thing that runs on nintendo yeah uh, if we couldn't get shigeru because of uh you know flight restrictions maybe reggie the uh nintendo of america president former president mm-hmm. oh right right he just did a thing uh on x-play not too long ago oh, really yeah g4 is back it's crazy on twitch and yeah, yeah they're they're back doing their thing really cool to see because if Jesus, I loved freaking G4 TV. Oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah, no, that would be cool. I would love to see those those people at Retro Game Con. It always seems uh guests are always so cool to see. It's like, holy cow, you voiced Mario my whole life, and here you are standing in front of me. Like that is right. so cool. What goes into like booking one of those people? Do you have to like call oh, a PR yeah, that's, person? That's, yeah, that's fun stuff to talk about on a on a podcast. I, for real, I'm not I'm not being uh, I'm not being sarcastic. So you would find out who uh, find out who you want to book as a guest. You would Google around to try to find their agent. A lot of them will list it right in their Twitter bio, like who their oh. business email is. So you right. email, you tell them who you are, uh, what you're interested in. Uh, when your events dates are and then you wait for a reply and then you'll uh, either get a sure they're interested or no, they can't make it. And then you talk about money and travel and stuff. Wow. And a lot of the, a lot of the guests will uh, a lot of the game designers are so, so generous. They come for flights and hotels in a lot of cases. I don't have to pay them. Like they're just super, super happy to meet fans and, you know, sign their games and give presentations on their games. Um, wow. and, and a lot of them do, a lot of them do come and sell, uh, unique stuff. Like, uh, like for example, uh, one of our guests, Brian Colin this year, he brings, uh, some original rampage art and stuff that you can buy and get signed. So that's super, super cool. Uh, the voice actors will often have like typical celebrity agents and they'll have, uh, they'll have requirements, uh, like gar- guarantees, which is where the show will guarantee they they're going to make a certain amount of money. Um, if not, you have to foot the rest of the bill. But if you're a, if you're a busy show like ours, the guarantees are usually no issue. And then you'll just cover like you know travel expenses and f- some food and stuff. It's actually it's it's a lot more it's a lot more reasonable and easier than you might think. Um, yeah, I'm thinking like these people would be so out of reach, but they seem like they're very in touch. Like it doesn't seem like it's out of the bounds of possibility. Yeah, and I mean we're not booking like A-list Avengers, you know, and stuff. That's that's a whole different ball game. But uh in the video game world, we're very fortunate to have a lot of super recognizable people with fantastic roles and great talent who are also big fans of the convention scene and like to travel around to these events and meet fans. So uh there's there's a large pool of really diverse and interesting people to look at when you're considering booking guests for a con. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, it does seem like all of this is way more than a full-time job, Pat. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's a part-time job for some of the year. And then as it gets closer to the show, 
like the last three or four months, I slowly shift more and more of my focus towards it until it's all I can think about or talk about, <laughs> much to my friends and wife's uh, frustrations. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's funny. And when uh, you guys had started the Retro Game Con, did the goals, like how did you measure your goals? Was it just like attendance? Is that probably the biggest factor that you guys can look at well the goal is to celebrate video games and and keep retro games alive in people's minds and expose people especially kids to how cool this world of retro gaming and classic video games is that's the primary goal um of course attendance is nice because that lets us do the show you know lets us uh continue yeah continue to grow and add more stuff to it so attendance is one of the primary focuses, but we honestly just want everybody to have a fun video game party. <laughs> that's what it is too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun video game party. That's Absolutely. I, that's what I, I appreciate about conventions. I will say I have gone to retro game con. I did when I worked for runnings, we did a couple of like sportsman conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, when I was younger, I did like uh computer conventions with my dad when i was younger what's yeah. really cool to me about conventions is it seems like it's uh just a lot of like-minded people that all like the same shit that all get to like talk about and and really like really show how much they love their passions and hobbies that's what it seems like a, a, a convention is really about yeah that's that's the best part of it is that when you're at a con like ours it kind of feels like you're home that's a cliche but uh, but it, it does. There's there's really no other way to describe it. You're surrounded by people who have the same uh, same nerdy interests as you do, and that's a pretty magical thing, you know. There's a yeah. there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of hate and and bad things always going on in the world, and cons provide, or at least we try to provide an escape from that, where you can come be yourself and enjoy the stuff that you love with other like-minded folks. Right. Right. In how did you two meet? Was it Danny just went to a retro game con? You guys bumped into each other? Um, I met Danny at the at the Salt City Comic Con oh, in, yeah. in 2013, I think. Yep. I think he had a booth and he was maybe selling stickers or something. Yeah, I, I was just selling random stuff because yeah. I had a table there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So that was that was another con that uh, was in Syracuse. I don't think they're doing it this year, but uh but that was another great show that was in Syracuse. And uh, we've done a lot of work with them in collaboration in the past. And Danny Danny just happened to be at that one. Yeah. And I was there hunting for video games, I think. I didn't have a booth or anything. I don't think it was until the Extra Life meeting, though, that we didn't, it, before we discussed, like, actually helping out for Retro Game Con. Yeah. I think it was around At that the hospital? Time, yeah, the yeah. first time we, like actually had a conversation <laughs> yeah so that might, that might have been like 2014 so. yeah and then danny you've been you've been working with him for the retro game con ever since yeah yeah I, mm -hmm. uh to, it, it slowly weaned my way into to making some graphics to to helping with the program to now helping with anything that we need banners uh social media graphics right uh, pamphlets Mm -hmm. flyers yeah danny and i don't know if do you know our other friend nathan grant he uh he, he, also, so. does, he also does a lot of the graphic design for us and it has in the past as well and oh, uh, okay we have been getting together on wednesdays like every week for about a year or two i don't know i don't know <laughs> two years two yeah. or, two or three years probably. i have no idea time is <laughs> nothing but yeah <laughs> And uh, we get together on Wednesdays. Nate and I uh, drink craft beer. Danny abstains and judges us. And we work on graphics and other retro game kind of stuff. When you guys are in the the meetings on Wednesday night, like what? How do you guys figure out what the objective to talk about that night is? Or is it just you guys just like shooting the shit, going back and forth? Um, well, th there's there's actually a lot there's a lot more individuals who help us out uh, with the con, and so that that's just our our Wednesday hang among the three of us. But uh, there's well four of us because Thane's there too. He doesn't do graphics though. But uh, <laughs> sounds like a Dungeon and Dragons night in disguise. We have we have, yeah. we have played D and D, yeah. and we're waiting. For I love Danny, that. We're waiting for Danny to continue the campaign. If we even, <laughs> if we even remember our characters at all, 
Poor I Danny, the forever Dan. A, I just remember there was a sexy but stupid giant, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember any other characters. <laughs> that's that's it. What really stuck with you, huh? <laughs> that's <laughs> Danny. Of uh, Danny was our DM too when we played. So poor nice. Danny's always that's stuck in the job. dungeon master position. Mm -hmm. He goes hard for D and D. <laughs> but yeah, there's. It's not. It's not just the few of us. There's a lot more people to help us out. And we have uh, we have meetings throughout the year with our larger staff as well. We usually how, that was going to be one of my questions: is how many people is working for you on an event like this? There's like a well, I'm the only employee. Um, don't tell anybody, but there's also <laughs> uh, I would say probably eight to ten people who form the core group and each have like a specific thing they work on throughout the year and help out with. And then there's a larger group of maybe forty or fifty volunteers who come. Uh, during the actual days of the show and help run things uh, on event days. Nice. And we, we, we're always uh, we're always looking for new volunteers too, and we'll put out an application for that soon as well. And you get a uh, you get free weekend admission. Uh, you get the T-shirt. You get to come to the VIP after party. Um, there's snacks and drinks at the show, uh, and you just have to work like a four hour shift in an area of your choosing during the show hours. And so we'll be we're always looking for new volunteers every year. So we'll be gotcha. putting that out soon, and we'll we'll probably need to recruit like twenty or thirty new volunteers this year. Uh, oh, wow, that's the goal, huh? Is that larger than in the past, just because of so many events you have running? Um, no, we just we end up with about maybe fifty volunteers overall each year, and uh, just like uh, just like with any volunteers, like I said before, uh, just people move away. A lot of times, it's college students who you know are here for one show and they're gone the next year. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so, so we're always in need of a constant, uh, refueling of our volunteer force for the show. Right. Right. And, and uh, uh, what, uh, what venues have you guys been at? Uh, the on first center is this year. Yep. The on center is our, the on center is our venue, uh, for the, for the foreseeable future. And we've been there since, uh, well, we've been there continuously since 2016, but we oh. were also there in 2014. In 2015, okay. we uh, temporarily moved to the Center of Progress building at the fairgrounds. This was yeah. before, before the new Expo Center was built. Yeah. Uh, so that's the second biggest building there. Uh, and then in 2013, the first one, it was at uh, Drivers Village in the Conference Center there. But it's uh, it's it's the on center. That's our it's place. It's gotten bigger pretty much, right from start to where it is now. Yeah, in 20, uh, 2018, we had one expo hall at the On Center. And then in 2019, we expanded to both, which is, I believe, about 80,000 square feet. And then we also have the downstairs meeting rooms and the front lobby area. Mm -hmm. So if I had to guess, I would say it's close to like 85,000 to 90,000 square feet now of wow. stuff. And wow. there's, there's more space to expand. The On Center has a whole downstairs ballroom area and atrium. So we yep. could... We could like uh, almost double the size of the show. And then if we ever got to a point where we were seriously outgrowing the On Center, we could just have it at the On Center and War Memorial at the same time. You know, that'd be that'd wild, be a, wouldn't it? That'd be a tremendous goal of ours to be able to yeah. do that. That would be I, cool. Yeah. I feel like you would need to like not only just go Syracuse, but also how can we pull even from a larger like area? Do you guys look at when you guys are promoting the show – because I know you can like with Google ads and different ad websites, mm -hmm. you can really like set a, a wide range of zip codes. Is yeah. that what you guys are doing? Just to try to capture everybody from even like Utica and out that mm -hmm. way. Oh, we definitely want Uticans to come to the show, but uh, sure. also, uh, also uh, farther away, Albany, like Rochester, uh, Albany. Yeah. yeah. Rochester, Buffalo, Binghamton, uh massachusetts connecticut pennsylvania we we advertise in all those places uh we do uh we do facebook targeted ads and instagram and we will have a youtube ad video we've done uh we've done radio ads in the past we might end up doing those this year we always record a commercial which is fun i do the voiceover <laughs> for the you got a radio voice dude uh, i can i probably don't right now i hate yeah. this voice i'm glad i can't hear myself right now but uh, <laughs> I, I have been told i can do a radio voice if i want to and you guys can be the judge of that you'll see the ad up on the if page. you want to dude you're hitting me with that radio voice right now oh well, thank you very much i appreciate it danny's got the voice between the two of us uh, <laughs> he's a singer did you know that i didn't know he sung you sang 
Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you should make them do huh. it on your podcast sometimes. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> wow, interesting. Well, I do need a new theme song. Oh, perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. How much do you charge for that? I don't know what we're starting to... <laughs> 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 that's so funny so with uh retro game con expanding and growing and hopefully this year being like kind of the testing the waters mm -hmm. if it goes off really well and you guys exceed expectations what do you what are you guys going to do from there well we're going to do it again uh, in 2023 <laughs> uh yeah so in 2019 uh i had another show that i had wanted to do for a number of years and then we finally pulled the trigger in 2019 and we did Empire Game Expo in Albany. And it was at a weird hotel. And it was awesome. And <laughs> it was it was a magical day of video games, July 13th in 2019. We had great guests. We had like 1,500 people show up for our first show. We had a packed list of vendors. And it's the only event I've ever done where I didn't feel a single complaint. There were, there were no one, no one even told me the bathrooms were dirty. And what do you think contributes to that? Just dumb luck? Or um, were you more prepared because it was so far away? I think because it was a new show and something we were trying for the first time. And we had a bunch of people from the Albany area who had never uh, worked on a con before helping us out. That everybody was just so excited. And it just, I don't know, it came together in such a, in such a nice way in such a short amount of time. I don't know what to attribute it to, honestly. It was just a, it was a great show. And it's a, a deep regret that I wasn't able to bring it back this year uh, because it was just too risky with, you know, uh, yeah. pandemic stuff and, and the uncertainty of running events again. Uh, What's but, the difference between Retro Game Con and Empire Game? Con? Empire Game Expo. Empire Game Expo. What's the difference between the two? Uh, so they were very similar. Um, we had the celebrity voice actor guests, the game designers, um, panels, vendors, tournaments, uh, cosplay. The main difference I would say is Albany's kind of the Albany area, the capital region is sort of like a hub of video game development. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, there's a lot of game studios there, I and didn't know a lot. That. Of, yeah, a lot of big studios were were uh, were founded there. And so, Whoa. and there's a lot of indie devs there as well. So we were able to have this indie game showcase there that was all uh, modern modern game developers set up showing off the games that they created. And we'll have one of those at Retro Game Con as well. But in 2019, that was the big difference, I would say, is that for a show uh, as relatively small as Empire Game Expo was, uh, we had we had a great deal of uh, indie game developers and just gaming industry stuff going on there. Oh, wow. And I'd love to bring that one back. That would be my first step if we were super successful this year was to consider doing that show in Albany again. In Albany, not in Syracuse. Yeah. You would do yeah, that in, in Albany. In addition to Retro Game Con, we would do the one, the Albany show in the summer and then still have Retro Game Con as our main event in the fall. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Did you go to that one too, Danny? I unfortunately could not go, uh, but I really wanted to. I mean, EGX was so promising uh but i my tight baseball schedule wouldn't allow it yeah yeah Plus, i really wanted to go because i got to design the logo for it yeah right that right. was that was cool <laughs> that's sweet as as just being somebody who would partake in the events danny who is well, i guess you kind of worked a lot of the events since 20 i guess i guess that doesn't really apply but is there an event that sticks out in your head that was like your favorite hmm Probably the first year was my favorite, I would say, because it was new to us. Uh, and I had Tim and Dave help me out and Brendan. Uh, and we just all got to experience it together and see how many vendors there were and all the people there just to look at retro video games. Yeah. That was something crazy. Right. Yeah, Danny had an army of people <laughs> helping him. He had like an entourage that was walking around with him. All from disc golf or uh, frisbee. Yeah, frisbee. Pretty much. I almost when you said your other friend Nate, I was yeah. gonna ask Danny. Danny, did he play frisbee with us? <laughs> no, no, but he probably would. He probably would. He probably would. Wow, that is so. It's really cool to see how it has has taken off, and I would imagine along the way, Pat, there's probably some things that like you kind of stumbled and and found the right way to do things 
was there some like hiccups and speed bumps that you're like, oh crap, I'm not doing that again? Uh, yes, many. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're like trying to figure out how to do this. Like you had no prior experience of running a convention prior to taking this over, right? Right, right. No, I didn't. And yeah, there's been a lot of every year is a huge learning experience. I have no illusions that I will make no mistakes in any given year. I'm sure there will be mistakes this year that we'll have to go back and work on. But we always put out a survey and we ask everybody what do they think. Tell me what I can do better. And we do make honest attempts to fix any problems that we find. Um, our one of our big struggles is always getting uh, good food because we uh, we have to use the on center uh, food vendor. Yeah. So we're always trying to figure out ways to uh, to nudge them into having some better offerings at the concession stands, and so that's something I'm working on this year. Um, it's too bad also, you can't have John from Three Lives go over there and just start whipping meals up for yeah, you. Yeah, that would be a dream. That would be. Uh, right? a, I would love to do that. He would be so interested too. I'm sure. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Love Three Lives. Three Lives is awesome. Uh, hopefully we can. Hopefully we can do one of our mini events there this year before the con. We're planning on that. We don't yeah, have. There, there are a bunch of awesome sweethearts over there. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to to derail you. What uh, I'll ask you. This is a good question. So I'll for you first, Danny. Danny, what is something that you would tell 2015 Danny right now, with your knowledge right now? Like if you could do something different, it's coming up to you, Pat. So you better have an answer no, ready to shoot. Right. That's why I had that look on my face. I'm like, I don't have an answer for this. I would probably say to just, uh, I would tell myself to to offer more graphic help because I don't think it, it was like closer to like 2017, 18-ish when I started really helping with the graphics where I was like, oh, I'll let them, they're, they're doing their thing. I'm just, I just run the, the extra life stage. You know, so I would I yeah. would tell myself to be more proactive and assisting with the graphics. That's my what about you? What about my three year old. If you hear the screaming in the background, that's my three year old oh, playing with okay. oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, What would I tell twenty fifteen Pat? Does it have to be convention related? I'll do no, it. it could be anything. No, I'll do a convention related. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll do you know, I'll Invest do invest in crypto. Whatever, what? whatever, Invest I'll do in crypto. One. I'm an open book, so I'll do some one that's kind of personal. I would just say to uh, to be a little easier on my friends okay. when, I, when I'm asking them to help me with the con. Just to remember, they're they're your friends first, and your convention helpers after that. Yeah, and uh, not to push them too hard because my friends are awesome and they will do things if I ask them to. But you can kind of go too far when. It's, you know, a volunteer thing that they're helping you out with. It has to yeah. be a reciprocal relationship with your friends, you know, yeah. so, uh, because uh, because my friends have been just so so generous and helping me out with the show. All of my friends are and my family I've met through video games. Whoa, so really? Yeah. I mean, without the convention has forged my whole social network. I, like I, anybody that I know and talk to and consider a friend, I can trace it all back to Retro Game Con in some way or another. Wow. So, uh, so I would tell 2015 Pat not to take that for granted and to just uh, do do my best to cultivate these friendships a little better and, uh, you know, maybe keep it 50% convention related friendship wise and, <laughs> instead yeah, of right. convention related. <laughs> because I get this feeling as we get closer to the con every year that I'm kind of turning just into the convention guy. And, mm. and and not being myself anymore. If not that being friend Pat, you know, and right. anyone who's friends with me on Facebook who hasn't already unfollowed me knows that I get progressively more annoying on social media as the year progresses because my posts go from posting like cool travel pictures to just posting about the con all the time. <laughs> you know, so you need to have you need to have balance is what I would yeah. tell. And it's really hard to find that balance sometimes, you know, yes. it can be really difficult to, to figure out when, when is too much and when is not enough. Right. Mm -hmm. It can be mm -hmm. kind of uh, just a little difficult to balance the two with uh, some of the performers and stuff that are coming up this year. Who are you really excited for? I wouldn't say the most excited because that'd be unfair to the other guests, but who are you really excited for? Well, let me, let me just go back to the previous thing and say something I forgot to say. And yeah. it's that that convention comes and goes. So it's like you it's like you get ready for this and you get ready for this and you get ready for this and it's your sole focus. And then that weekend passes by in an absolute flash. 
And yeah. we as the people working it, sometimes it's hard to like sit there and enjoy it and take it in as it's happening, you know? Yeah. And then when it's over, it's, you know, it's another year until you get to do it again. Yeah. So that's, a, that's kind of like a surreal thing that I just wanted to point out that anybody who's worked on an event like this is familiar with. You have like post sort of depression that you have to work on. You know, it's like that with anything where you work, work hard, work hard and the excitement mounts and mounts and mounts. And then the thing happens or you finish the job and then it's like, all right, what do I do now? You know? Yeah. I, I will say it's funny that you say that because with our, my friends, we do the dungeon donations charity stream, which Danny has helped us out. So, yeah. so generously. Congratulations, by the way, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, How much did you raise for that? Uh, we did uh, over 5,000. So the stream was 4,700 Sixty dollars plus five hundred bucks from Prevention Health Network, which mm -hmm. is a local Syracuse group, and three hundred and ten bucks from Three Lives. John donated uh, money. He basically did like a roll a shot that night, and anybody who did that, a dollar of that proceed went to uh, the charity event. So it was really good. It was it was a good time. But I feel those same feelings because it's like yeah. we do it twice a year, and it's like there's a big ramp up the month. Like, because we got planning, we got to figure it out. Who's doing what? There's a lot of moving parts. We want to mm -hmm. make sure we nail the stream. Who's doing the setup? Who's running this? Who's doing that? Have you reached out to this person? Have you reached out to this charity? And then it's like when the, the day of the event, you're excited, you're pumped. We're, we're enjoying it. We're having a good time streaming. And then the next day I'm like, oh, it's over. Now I got to wait another six months to do it all over again. Yeah. Like, you're right. It's like convention depression. I have, yeah, like, I have streaming depression. Now, wash the dishes and go for a jog. Like, what do I? Is that what yeah. people do? I have all this extra energy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, no, it's funny that you said that because yeah, I was feeling yeah. the same thing, especially after this last event. I don't know what it was about this last event, but I really felt like the the next day I was like, "Damn, I gotta wait six months now." Mm -hmm. This well, is fun. I really enjoyed putting those together, and I you really. Don't wait six months if you do it at retro game con that's right sure. holy shit we are on to something I'm raise D D money at retro game con holy shit we are on to something okay hold on yeah. <laughs> i'm um, i have to write this down because if i forget i gotta i bet you mike and dennis will be totally into this for I sure mean, the only thing i i already asked danny if i should ask you that but then the thing that I kind of hesitated about is I thought maybe you would want to enjoy the con with your son. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I, when I took him to junior, it was a lot of fun to bring him, yeah. but he was sprinting everywhere. And I hardly got to talk to any <laughs> vendors other than uh, I saw my friend, Gary Dolan. He was selling yeah. some toys over there. I got to talk to Danny very briefly, but other than that, I was like, Hey, get back over here. Hey, yeah. go, come back over here. <laughs> yeah. So, if if we did something for Retro Game Con, at least it would give me the opportunity to kind of enjoy the event a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, let me know. We could just do it one day if you wanted to. You know. Damn. What? Let's workshop it right now. Well, what do you think? What would you guys like to see us do? Like play D and D live or do the event live at at the Game Con? Like run a, an um, hour and a half game. I'm not sure. I think uh, we could easily set up some sort of streaming there uh, for sure streaming and yeah. cameras there that that's something that could be set up um this the only thing is a lot of the people that would donate and watch are probably going to be at the con you know right hopefully right. they will be so that's <laughs> the only little strange thing about it but i don't know I'm, right. open, I'm open to workshopping it and and throwing around some ideas yeah, yeah we'll figure I, I really i think there is something that we can do there's something there I just want to, I feel like mm -hmm. we got to figure it out and brainstorm what we can do. Cause that would be a, a freaking sick to I do mean, something at the game. We could, the, we could put the whole game on stage and then we could put the broadcast on the projector screen. Oh, so, shit. That, so you could have an audience watching like on the big screen as you're. Oh playing. shit. That would be wild. Huh? We would just need to have Danny film it and figure out all the technological <laughs> stuff. We just so, have that on his plate, no problem. Danny, we'll do the fun D and D stuff. You yeah. have to figure out all everything else. Can you do that? Not a, yeah, no. no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna say we could we could do something like that where we bring you guys up on the extra life stage, and mm -hmm. 
incorporate that into it. But also what you guys could do too is do uh, one shots. If the three of you would DM four people and do like an intro to D and D, I think that would be really cool to get like a little beginner's class on it for some people that have like, Oh, I've always wanted to do D and D, but I don't sure. have the time. Even if it's like 30 minutes, like here's, kind of how the story starts and this is what you would want to do and you can even just have temporary characters like here's a generic rogue here's mm -hmm. a paladin here's a bard what would you like to run yeah. i mean you guys are you guys are are very charismatic if you don't mind me saying so you it could be part <laughs> it could be part real D, D game part performance art you know yeah where it's like yeah. a, a comedic sort of adventure and yeah real that's adventure. there's like people who have who literally play D, &D live to a whole audience so i'm sure we could we could make that happen i kind of like the mix i like doing something on stage i think that'd be really cool as long as mike and dennis are on board and also doing that intro to D, &D that's something that we've kind of kicked around to that yeah i think would be really fun yeah um, we could you could lead that up to the the event on stage so that way people are familiar with you too from seeing you in at the convention you know mm -hmm. The, the swirl of guests usually rotates around free play and vendor hall and board game area and the PC room, which we haven't even talked about. Yeah, it's not a PC <laughs> room anymore. It's just out on the convention floor. But oh, yeah. Uh, the PC room to like play computer games? Yeah, we have we actually have the, the largest interactive computer exhibit on the East Coast. And that's uh, that's not a claim that I make lightly. I've researched and it's true. We have, we have more vintage cool. computers than anybody. So at the con, if you... And, and you can see this for yourself if you just go to YouTube and just type Retro Game Con 2019. You'll see people's videos. We have, uh, we must have close to 100 vintage computers, uh, complete with you know the monochrome and and green and amber monitors that go along with them. Everything from Apple II to Commodore 64, IBM, Tandy, all those classic computers of the 80s and 90s, uh, set up with all kinds of classic games. And that's in addition to our video game consoles. So we have, we have a huge uh, retro computer section. Who, who houses all those computers? Is that like a personal uh, collection of yours or is that somebody? Awesome, it's awesome volunteers and friends of ours. Uh, the person who heads wow. it up is uh, Sam Rose. And he, he has, he's like Danny. He has an army of people helping him out and uh, they have their own uh, telegram chat and they have uh, between them at least a hundred vintage computers and they're working on them all through the year to find them, fix them, refurbish them, clean them, test them, because these machines, you know, they break down, especially with people playing them at our events. Yeah. Um, so, so they require like constant work and tweaking, and uh, that's that's uh, one of their many hobbies among this group of people headed by Sam. They they get together and they work on computers and and uh, they've curated an amazing collection. Wow. Yeah. So do they do uh, other conventions or is it just like you guys? Um, so far it's just retro game con, but I'm sure they'd, uh, I'm sure they'd bring wow. stuff to other, to other local events or I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to speak for them, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. yeah like, I, I don't, I don't own, I don't own this stuff. That's all. It's all volunteer stuff. So, uh, I, uh, wow. yeah, I, I, I serve at their, at their discretion. Like they're <laughs> like the, the con is, uh, something that they have thankfully chosen to uh, set this up at. And I'm super grateful for it. But, yeah. That's, that's really impressive. The largest, that is insane. Hey, Pat, uh, we just need a thousand outlets. Can you get us a thousand outlets? Yeah. The power requirements are crazy for the show. That, that's what I was thinking. I was just thinking the most, like at the, when we were walking through the most, I'm like, there is a lot of things going on. The energy bill must be through the roof. Now I'm a dad. Yeah, I got a two year old. So now I'm thinking energy impressive. bill and, that's even more impressive when you consider that the armory building there, the most, is one of the oldest buildings in Syracuse. So they've, wow. they've got some seriously good modern wiring in there to be able to support all that stuff. Of course, yeah. they, and they've got that giant new theater there, too, the Explorer Dome. Uh, that thing is rad, by the way. If you ever oh, I haven't gone it. in it yet. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, your son's too young for the shows. They'd be a little scary, I think, because they were scary for, for my daughter. But yeah. there's a dinosaur show and a planetarium show. And it's like an IMAX, but it's even higher resolution. It's super, super cool. Oh, but, wow. But yeah, uh, uh, power bills and, and power requirements <laughs> are, roof. it's another thing that you don't think about. Uh, one of the intricacies of running an event like ours is we have to plan for all that power and to not 
you know, trip the breakers and make the power go out. Yeah. Um, on that side of town <laughs> right yeah i know right there's so much plugged yeah. in so much be, plugged you in. know uh 25 or 30 pinball and arcade machines as well and those are those are power demanding uh, power hungry machines too so oh my lord tons and tons oh. of power drops full-time electrician uh all hours of the show running around fixing things running wires um, wow. tackling, tackling problems as they arise that's that's Dude, all there part are so of it. many moving parts to this yeah, yeah there are Ah, oh. there are our to-do lists are crazy right now. <laughs> what what are the next objectives to get you guys ready for for October? What's on the plate right now? Um, getting the word out and getting uh, getting people interested in the con, uh, generating buzz on social media, and just just aware spreading awareness that we're we're back. We're hosting the show this year. Uh, please come out and support us. That's the main goal from now until October eighth. Just to to push that the game con is back the retro game con which by the way i don't think has there been any other conventions that have gone off in syracuse i'm very bad with this probably yeah. like the rv convention there's been smaller uh there's been smaller comic cons in syracuse like uh, at the university and there was a uh, there was a library a couple library ones here and there um nothing nothing on the scale of retro game con as far as like a a nerdy convention in syracuse there's uh, Star City Games is returning to the On Center. That's the mm -hmm. trading card game con. I think that's in July or it might be August. Don't quote me on that. Look it up. They're, they're the same venue, uh, Star City Games. Uh, big trading card company is coming back. Other than that, um, there's no Comic-Con in Syracuse on the scale of the Salt City Comic-Con this year. Uh, we just returned from, I just returned from uh, NoCo Con, the North Country Con, which yeah. was a brand new one in Watertown. That was a pretty good show for, yeah. for a first year, an excellent show. Um, we've, I, Danny's actually coming with me this weekend to a big video game convention in Philadelphia. Too many games. Whoa. That's like the, that's the big uh, granddaddy of Northeast gaming cons and, and one that we've sort of modeled ourselves after a little bit over the years. Interesting. That's, coming Interesting. Up this weekend. that's a big one. Very exciting. Hoping to see kind of like what they do, what you can kind of take back as your own, SOP and yeah, if they, procedures. If they get a killer attendance, then that's going to be invigorating for us because that's going to show me, look, the people are out there and willing to travel and come to these game events again. Yeah. So what, very excited about that. What are you guys most excited about that event for? Is there like one thing in particular or are you just excited to go experience uh, yeah. it? Selling our stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we were going to load up. We have a booth. So we're promoting the con, but we're also going to load up with uh, extra video games and stuff that we've bought, you know, thrifting and buying from yard sales and stuff. Nice. So, uh, nice. We're going to set up with stuff for sale and uh, we'll be promoting the con, giving away some tickets, giving away some other retro game con swag and stuff. If we see people wearing retro game con shirts there, they're going to get a special prize. I don't Ooh. know. <laughs> I'm not being a secret. You get Danny's it. power okay. glove. Danny's gonna get caught Danny's where gonna Danny's like, I'm not giving that up. <laughs> Danny's gonna sing the uh, Sonic Adventure soundtrack. Oh my god. <laughs> Danny, Danny, please. I would love to hear it. Just kidding. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to. I'm not gonna put you on the spot. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, li uh, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk. This was really cool because I don't it's very eye opening for me because I don't know what goes into a convention and mm -hmm. I'm very ignorant to how much freaking works involved for two dudes who have well more than two dudes a lot of people who also have full-time jobs who do this as a part-time gig it's yeah my full-time job is selling video games on ebay so it's not as not nearly oh, as serious as danny's oh, that's fucking cool <laughs> that is so cool that is awesome Danny, that's why you were selling video games on ebay yeah a little bit yeah that's why you got sucked into it yeah inspired mm -hmm. me <laughs> Okay, I will tell a funny story. He used to sell his games to me. And now he just takes them to eBay. <laughs> now he just goes to eBay. Yeah. I will say there's this very funny story. And I, Danny, I hope you still laugh at this story. But I remember Danny showing me that he bought a video game, Bratz, for Xbox, right? For Xbox, yeah. for like a dollar. And then I feel like it was around the time I was showing you houses, Danny. And yeah. the next time that I had saw you, like a week past, you're like, Remember that game I picked up for a dollar? I just sold on eBay for $15. And I looked you dead in the eye and I said, who the fuck 
is paying $15 for an Xbox Bratz game. It's still a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played that one, but you'd be surprised at the gameplay on some of these kids' like shovelware titles. Some of them are quite good. <laughs> <laughs> it is crazy. Okay, so... There's a Shrek right. for Game Boy Advance that I love. Oh, I don't really? remember which one it is. <laughs> Shrek for Game Boy Advance? Yeah, there's there's one there's one and then there's the Shrek Super Party. I like that game. Oh yeah. Was it like a Smash rip off? Or um, was it Mario Party? I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, it's like a Mario Party clone. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> Pat, I would I would love to play that, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not paying fifteen dollars for Shre- a Shrek Mario Party. <laughs> Somebody paid fifteen dollars for a Bratz game. Listen, I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to say I didn't think there was a market for Bratz video games, but Danny has proved to me otherwise, and I respect <laughs> Danny for that. Well, listen, there's play, <laughs> there's playability, and then there's rarity, and sometimes you have games that fit into both, and they're they happen to be good games. But they're also hard to find, and when you have that combo, especially with classic games, that means a high, high price. Yep. Okay. Some, some of the titles are quite surprising. I mean, the most famous. Infamous expensive game of all time, Stadium Events. It's a, it's a not so amazing game for NES. That uh, it's like a sports game. Like a, um, what is the Athletic World is the other version of it, right? The attainable yeah. version. Is that was is that- it just a bunch of different sports games? Honestly, I've never played it. Is it a power <laughs> pad. Game? It's just really expensive. Uh, yeah. If you consider like a hundred thousand dollars, really expensive. Yes. <laughs> Depending on if you have you know, the box and manual, uh, then you could be talking a lot more than that. You would be talking more than that. Uh, huh. so, uh, the games that are the games that command high prices are often quite surprising. Oh, dear lord! Well, listen, everybody's everybody has. I feel like sometimes they're hunting for a nostalgic uh, thing to remind them of their past, right? So probably the person with this the brats though maybe that hits home for them me it would be time splitters future perfect now that's a different story i mean but, on, on gamecube that's that's a really expensive game these days Good dude luck. that was one of my favorite shooters yeah i mean that that uh changed the game for first person shooters or, yep one uh, of my yeah. favorites that mm-hmm. is my if you if you could say if i can wave a magic wand and make a video an og video game pop up it would be time splitters 2 but more preferably future perfect because it had all the characters that you could play. It had way more characters and the way you could unlock them was really fun. It was really engaging. Yeah. That, that on GameCube was one that I loved. Uh, and that's, that's also got the combo of being kind of rare and a super playable, awesome game. Yeah. Another one on GameCube, eternal darkness. That's mm. my, that's my hit on GameCube. Ooh. That's the one that uh, tricks you into thinking your uh, GameCube is glitching, but it's all just part of the game. Oh, wow. I have not heard that game in a long time. Mm-hmm. Wow. Damn. Now I'm going to go try to find a, a mod to go play Time Splitters. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to because, uh, I mean, you'll have to sell a couple more houses if you're going to buy a physical copy of it. <laughs> yeah, because it's so goddamn expensive. <laughs> yeah, that'll be uh, the commission on like a skinny Atlas waterfront property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm just going to type in. Uh, Future Perfect, GameCube, eBay. $250 for the case and the game. Wow. In this case, by the way, a dog chewed on it, on the corner of it. Still charging $250 for it. That's that's GameCube. That's GameCube. (laughs) Even like the Mario games, of which there were who knows how many millions. Millions. Well, maybe not millions of all of them but no you know three four million copies of mario kart double dash probably and that's uh that's got to be upwards of like 80 or 90 dollars mm-hmm. at the moment right wow it's always it's, <laughs> it's stunning when a retro game uh gets to be more than what the original msrp was right that's always yeah. the <gasps> moment when when, <laughs> right. a game, when a game exceeds what it sold for when it was new yeah. originally yeah i'm gonna be honest pads you make me kind of feel old when i see that happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> Absolutely. I'm like, oh shit, dude! I played that game so much when I was twelve. It's still sixty dollars. Why? It's two fifty now. What the fuck? Yeah, well, I mean, I grew up with NES, so that's that's. <laughs> and believe it or not, there's people that are alive that grew up with Atari. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My dad's so mad right now. My dad's like, "What the fuck? I grew up with Atari. It's bullshit." I could have 
to Atari. I just want to say, our parents spent every last penny buying us uh, buying us stuff we didn't need. Thankfully, <laughs> they were great. So we had the Nintendo on day one. And I damn, put, I remember putting yeah. some blue slimes and Dragon Warrior as like a three year old, not understanding what was going on oh on the old console TV with the fabric covered speakers and the knobs and yep. dials. Yep, mm-hmm. where you had to either play on channel three or five if you want to play video games. Yep, two, three, or four on that one. Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they didn't even have the coaxial screw-on cable adapter. You had to use an antenna adapter. Yeah, ooh. Money years antenna adapter. To Back in my day, we didn't even have this goddamn HDMI. <laughs> walk uphill two miles in the snow just God. to play Super Mario uh-huh. Bros. <laughs> <laughs> we were grateful of it. <laughs> oh, tip, tip for your viewers: Don't try to play Duck Hunt on a modern LCD TV. It does not work. The light oh, gun, the light gun need- relies on the the flash and the glass of the CRT TV. So you have mm. to have a whole TV. Although there are new fancy ones. Oh really? You, yeah, there's like an oh. adapter that you can buy from Hyperkin, I think, uh, oh, that lets course. you use uh, their their zapper on a modern TV. <laughs> Pro tip, Pat. Yeah, at, at, at junior we had we couldn't come up with any good tournaments. So uh, w- one of our guys, I think Greg, who's another we'll do a duck hunt tournament, helper, said let's do let's do a tiny duck hunt on little teeny tiny uh, TV screens. <laughs> duck hunt's too easy on a normal size screen. But yeah. what if we, what if we gave people a nine inch TV to work with <laughs> and made them stand six feet away? That's hilarious. Not, not very accessible if you're, you know, if you don't see all that well. Yeah. Which is not bad, but it was it was fun to watch people struggle with that one. Oh, wow, that's funny. That's amazing. Well, listen, Joan, thank you so much for doing this. This is uh this was a lot of fun and I feel like very eye-opening. And also now I got to talk about to Mike and Dan to figure out how we can work together and do something for you guys. Cause that'd be a lot of fun. Definitely. I'll let Danny talk more next time we get on one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, no, you out. This was great. This was fantastic. Thank you guys for doing it. I appreciate both of you guys. Yeah. Thank thanks. You. Thanks Corey. Have a good night.